Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So today's gonna be a little different. As you can see, I'm not home and there's no fish tank on either side behind me anywhere, but for good reason. So I'm actually on a work trip right now and on the way coming, uh, I remember going through some comments on some previous videos that I made, specifically the one that I made right here, talking about uh, best new beginner African cichlids. Again, that was only my own opinion and based on African cichlids that I myself started with that worked out good for me. But I had a really good question and here's the question right here. So in essence, reading that and after I responded to it, it made me think that, you know, it's a really good opportunity for a video and give my perspective on it. Cause you can find a million different opinions online from other fish keepers who do what they want to their beliefs. They say, don't do this, don't do that. Or maybe try this, maybe try that. And in this hobby, you find out pretty quickly that one's opinion is not the end all be all for every fish keeper out there. Everyone has different experiences you might have the same type of fish that someone might be talking about specifically, but for whatever reason, your fish is different. And you're gonna find that out as I did too. So with that being said, the main question kind of was like, hey, I own all male peacocks, or doesn't even have to be all males, let's just say all peacocks for the sake of argument. And the question was, can I add embunas because as we all know, African cichlid fish already as they are, they are an aggressive fish. They're not for beginners per se, although it can be done. So naturally being that I keep both peacocks and bunas and also some haps in my tank, I'm gonna say yes, it's very possible for them to live, live cohesively. So in this video, I kind of want to talk a little bit about how you can maintain a peaceful tank with all these different species of African cichlids with no issues at all. As long as you play close attention, everything should be all right. All right, so check it out. So what's worked for me, the way I see it, is that you need four major components to make this work. All right, so number one for me, let's start from the very basics, and it's probably something that you've heard a lot of if you've done your research on African cichlids, which is number one, keep an overstocked tank. Now, what do I mean by this? By this, I mean, Overstock your tank more than you think you would actually need to, according to what the local fish store might tell you. So there is a uh, an ongoing theory or opinion or advice that says, hey, per gallon of tank, it is only appropriate to add one inch fish. Ooh, how <laughs> so stupid, I messed that up. Anyways, I, I'm pretty sure I confused you. So what I really meant was they say only one fish per inch. So the ongoing advice that I commonly hear is stock your fish according to the amounts of gallons that can fit in that tank, meaning one inch per gallon in your tank. Now, whatever math you think that is, go ahead and knock yourself out. I'm not gonna do that for you here in this video. One inch per gallon. So in other words, if you're gonna buy a fish, you find out what its approximate max length is. So let's say you're gonna go with the bristlenose pleco, for example, I'm just picking one because I just know the length off the top of my head. They can get up to five to six inches. So if you have a 10 gallon tank, Again, just for example, and you're putting a bristlenose pleco in there and you can grow up to six inches. Now you really only have four gallons left for another fish. That's no. So anyways, overstock your tank. The reason for doing this is because it keeps your fish busy and it also keeps your fish from trying to single out that one other fish that it doesn't like in your tank. This also keeps it kind of semi chaotic so that way Everyone's constantly swimming. Everyone is distracted by all the other fish around them and whatnot. So this is a really good way to A, keep aggression down and B, keep your fish active and swimming. And it makes for a pretty entertaining tank if you ask me. Me personally, 
I'm not a big fan of fish that just stay there still and don't swim. There's a big reason why I'm not a fan of angelfish or maybe some American fish because they typically tend to just stay in one spot and don't move. And I'm a kind of person that loves active swimming fish. All right, so number two is gonna be having some sort of obstacles in your tank, whether that be rock work, driftwood, pieces of PVC pipe, regular decor, maybe plants. The reason for doing this is A, it helps provide smaller fish a place to hide and feel comfortable. And it also helps other less dominant fish um, get away from those that are trying to get at them. What it also does is it breaks the line of sight. So for example, if one fish has its sight set on this one fish in the tank and it's constantly going after it, if there's so much in the way, for them to break their focus, that's gonna help that other fish get away and escape and just keep the other fish distracted because you have an overstock tank to begin with. So it helps out a lot. Uh, it's a pretty good idea, something that you might wanna consider. Number three is gonna be make sure, given number two, you also remember to have space for your swim to fish. <laughs> You also have space for your fish to swim. Oh God, it's, yeah, it's late. Reason being is because if you're gonna mix haps, peacocks, and imbunas, one thing you gotta know is haps and peacocks typically like an open space to swim. They're very active swimmers. They're not really into the rock work and whatnot. So in my tank personally, I keep all my ox. In my tank, personally, I keep all my obstacles and my rock work down low in the tank to give the Mbuna somewhere to graze, hide, swim around, and kind of feel comfortable in their own little space. While up top, in the upper half of my tank, it's pretty open where my peacocks can swim back and forth and get all that energy burning, and um, that's just what they prefer. So keep in mind that when you're mixing species of fish in one tank, you're accommodating comfort and um, the necessities for each fish so that way they can all be cohesive in the same place and call it home and number four on this list last but not least in my opinion is having a constant or good enough water flow in your tank so whether that be using power heads maybe having a strong enough filter uh, for example like a canister filter that has an output flow that's pretty strong which creates like a current in your tank so creating a current in your tank actually distracts the fish by constantly keeping them swimming. If you have still water, maybe put yourself in a fish's shoes. You're, you're a fish, your life is to swim. Like that's what you're born to do. And if you're in stagnant water that doesn't move, I imagine you get, probably get pretty bored, maybe a little agitated, upset, and you wanna take it out on the next guy. And that guy or gal can be another fish in your tank. So if you have constant movement of water flow in your tank, it keeps them busy, keeps them swimming, keeps them active, tires them out, burns energy, all that good stuff. They will be happy, trust me. So that's really it. And I want to bring this to you guys because again, this is stuff that's helped me out and it's worked in my, opinion, in my experience. I've had all three of these fish living together in one tank. Um, and apart from African cichlids, I also keep clown loaches, I have yo-yo loaches, and I have a pleco. Everybody gets along perfectly great because I've made it to where everyone has a little piece of home inside my tank where they can feel comfortable. And that's very important in this hobby. So that's all it was, guys. Not a long video for you today. I just had to get my thoughts out, I guess, on video, let you know, because I know that these questions come, come about uh, quite often for people who are just getting into the hobby and maybe first dabbling with African cichlids um, Out there when you're doing your research It seems like everyone's always dissuading people like hey, don't you dare mix embunas with peacocks or don't put peacocks with embunas and don't put haps With other fish because they're more carnivorous whereas embunas are more Omnivores uh, omnivorous, I don't know, but they eat plants. They like vegetables. They like um more of their plant-based foods, whereas peacocks and haps like more protein in their diet. If you guys don't agree or agree, let me know in the comments below. If not, if you like this video, smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. We're on a road to 100 subscribers, which slowly but surely we're getting there and I'm trying to put up more content as much as possible, but we'll see.
I appreciate you guys. I appreciate all the love. So thank you. And don't forget to check out my other videos after this. So that being said, peace.